All right. So we want to continue with chapter two, finish up and jump into chapter three. So first I want to talk about preparing solutions. So to prepare solutions in the lab, you want to start at the balance. Measure out your concentration of your analyte or your sample. Put it into the volumetric flask. And then you want to add about half of the volume. Swirl it until it's fully dissolved. And then you're going to add solvent up to the mark. And then you'll want to cap the volumetric or put parafilm on the top and then invert it several times so that you mix it completely. So this is very important when you're preparing your solution. You also want to make sure that you don't go past the mark in the neck, right? So if you've got the, the mark at this line, you want the lower part of the meniscus to just be touching that line. And that is an ideal solution. So we also can make dilutions. We use stock solutions quite a lot in the laboratory. We can use our dilution equation where we have the concentration of the stock and the volume of the stock solution here and the concentration of the dilution and the volume of the dilution here. So for this equation, the units that have to match are the units of the concentration. They have to be the same as each other. And the units of the volume also have to be the same as each other. But the units of the concentration don't have to match the units of volume, right? You just want to make sure that you can cancel out whatever you have uh, two of. OK, and then we'll do a practice problem with that in just a minute. Um, but I also want to remind you of percent yield problems uh, that we had from general chemistry. They'll come back up again. And so finding percent yield, we have to have the actual yield over the theoretical yield times 100. All right, so let's do a practice problem. So this is our dilution problem. So M of the stock times the volume of the stock equals the concentration of our dilution times the volume of the dilution, right? So we need to figure out what we have in our equation. So we need what volume of a three molar glucose stock solution, right? So we need the volume of the stock solution and we know the concentration is 3.00 molar is necessary to prepare 2,500 milliliters of a 0 0.400 molar solution. So we have the concentration of the dilution and we have the volume of the dilution, right? And we can check here, our concentration is both in molarity, so that's great. And then we know that our volume that we'll get out from this equation should be in milliliters. So we just need to solve our equation for that term there. So we can uh, substitute our amounts in. Volume of the stock is gonna equal 0 0.400 molar solution times 2,500 milliliters. Divide both sides by three molar. And we can see the molarity should cancel out. Whoops, sorry, that should be three. Right, and molarity will cancel out and we should be able to do that calculation. All right, and we will get the volume for the stock solution that we need is 333 milliliters. Three is our significant figure level in our equation. So we can drop units past that. It was a three, so I rounded down. So 333 mils of our stock to prepare that concentration of our dilution. All right, if we do a percent yield problem, we're gonna have to calculate our theoretical yield, right? So remember the percent yield Right, it's going to equal the actual over the theoretical, right, times 100, right? And so for this, we're going to read our equation. Upon reaction of 1.274 grams of copper sulfate, 
okay, of that unit with excess zinc. So we have excess here. We get a yield of 0 0.392 grams of copper solid, uh, according to our equation down here, right? And so it's asking the percent yield. So you have to remember, right, that your equation is in moles, right? So this is one mole of copper sulfate reacts with zinc to yield one mole of our copper. So we have a one-to-one -one relationship here. But we have, we're going to have to go through our mole conversions, right, to figure out um, what the theoretical yield is, right? So right now we can say percent yield. We've been given the actual, which is 0 0.392 grams of copper, right? And we need to calculate the theoretical so we can put it on the bottom of that equation. Right? And then we can multiply it by 100 and get our percent yield. So we need to know the molar mass of copper sulfate, which is adding up the molecular weight of one copper, one sulfur, and four oxygens. All right. And so if we do that, we will find that this mass is 159.609 grams per mole. Right. And we will also need to know the molar mass of copper, which is 63.546 grams per mole. Okay, and then we can do our conversions. So I'm gonna convert the copper sulfate first. 274 grams of my copper sulfate times one mole of copper sulfate over 159.609 grams. That's going to give me 0 0.00798 moles of copper sulfate, right? We know we have a one-to-one -one ratio of copper sulfate to copper. So that is also the same amount uh, in moles of copper that we should get out, right? So moles of copper, right? And we're gonna multiply that by the gram weight of this, 0 0.392, oh, sorry. 63.546 grams per mole to figure out how many grams that we have in our theoretical yield. All right, so I'm calculating here 0 0.507 grams of copper equals the theoretical yield, right? So I can put that over in my equation over here Multiply it by 100, and that is going to give me 77.3% yield. All right, so that's the percent yield. So remember, you've got to go grams to moles to moles and then back into grams to get your theoretical yield. So that's going to end Chapter 2 for us, and now we can jump into Chapter 3.